Hey everyone, Mitch coming in from the Commander's Core Studio. Welcome to the super early show. Yeah, it is uh, really early. I had my first cup of coffee already. Mom is here. That's right. March Machine spoiler season has officially finally started. I mean, we've had like, you know, first look, uh, some leaks, other miscellaneous things that have happened, you know, articles coming out too early, which might have been what happened this morning because uh, Forbes put out an article. At like 1.15 a.m. was like, hey, spoilers! And uh, not sure Wizards was anticipating that because Wizards has like their like, you know, kickoff thing uh, in a couple of hours. So, uh, so yeah, maybe just a little, little early on that, but that's okay. Yeah, we've got some really exciting spoilers. One that I definitely am excited to share. And uh, here we go. Um, okay, yeah, no, it's not this one. Uh, Sadar Jabari. This is a very, very, very old card. That's only like a buck or so, but it is on the reserve list, technically. Uh, it is a 2-2 two -two with flanking. Uh, that costs three and a white. Flanking's weird. Uh, and whenever it attacks, it taps down target creature defending player control. It's cool. Uh, that's not why I'm bringing this up. Why I'm bringing this up is because Sadar Jabari is back and better than ever. And it just kind of shows you uh, how far magic cards have come in, uh, in however many years since Mirage. Goodness gracious, 96. So that's... Uh, a, a lot of years. <laughs> uh, math, like 27 years. Uh, so yeah, I mean, there's been some power creep since then. Because now we've got Sadar Jabari of Zalfir. A 4-3 human knight for one white, blue, black eminence. Oh my goodness. I did not think they'd ever be bringing back eminence. Because, well, eminence is kind of a, uh, I mean, not hotly debated topic. But basically, yeah, some players don't like it. And some players are okay with it. And some players love it. It's, um... It's something that you can't really interact with. It says, whenever you attack with one or more knights, if Sadar Jabari of Zelfir is in the command zone or on the battlefield, draw a card and discard a card. I'll get right back to that in a second. Flying first strike. Whenever Sadar Jabari deals combat damage to a player, return target knight, creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. So, a knight tribal commander. But again, hey, Eminence. Uh, again, kind of problematic because uh, it's kind of like an enchantment that you just start off with in play that no one can touch that's kind of like what it is because hey even if you never play your commander you're still just getting value out of it inherently by it being there now there's only so many commanders out there i think five other ones essentially that have eminence uh anala uh forgive me uh, rabo i was gonna say the cat one <laughs> rabo ur dragon oh no i'm forgetting the other one i mean aloro and uh now i'm forgetting one of the more obvious ones i'm sure oh yeah um uh vampire goodness gracious edgar markov it's early in the morning Regardless, some more powerful than others, but uh, but yeah, Eminence, again, is just kind of... Uh, it's strange to see on a card. I didn't think I'd ever see this mechanic again on a creature, or sorry, on a commander. But here it is. Again, I mean, it is somewhat limiting, obviously, because it has to be Knight Tribal. Or not Knight Tribal, but you're only getting the benefit from Knights attacking. And you're only getting basically one benefit, right? Whenever you attack with one or more Knights. So, this isn't like whenever you attack a player with one or more Knights. That would give you three instances. It's not whenever you attack with a Knight. That would be absurd. Regardless, yeah, you can just at least, at the very least, you're getting a looting effect just by attacking with a knight and just having this commander in your command zone. That is automatically just additional benefit that you are getting. And of course, there are ways to get even more benefits from that draw and discard. Like, you know, getting maybe some knights in your graveyard and then actually getting your commander out. Look at the concept of getting an eminent commander out or eminence commander out. Flying first strike, so obviously some protection there with a first strike. And then flying, you know, a way to get through on players, which of course works really well with that combat damage trigger. Dealing combination of player, getting a knight creature card from your graveyard back to the battlefield. Hey, that pairs incredibly well with that eminence. So, yeah, being able to just discard a pretty big knight. And there's only so many, actually, knights that are pretty big out there. Yeah, you don't really see knights above, like, four mana for the most part. Yes, there are some at five a couple at six, really, but uh, but yeah, you can still cheat on the mana cost of certain knights. And of course, there's ways to use and abuse that effect and get even more value out of that. And yeah, there are plenty of very powerful knights out there, too. Now, on these quick takes, I'm going to be taking you through some budget buys that are cards that are less than $1 cards within my budget. And then some cards that are, well, um, slightly more than my budget. <laughs> so, some cards that are in the pricier picks, cards that are more than $1. Dollar. With all that said, all these cards are in the link in the description below. And yeah, consider picking up some of these cards sooner rather than later because, yeah, when exciting commanders like this one are spoiled, sometimes cards that work well with them tend to go up in price uh, sooner than later. Let's jump into it. So we've got Thought Reflection for the first budget buy. Budget buys, uh, yeah, again, less than $1. Thought Reflection, very happy this one's still less than a dollar. Achievement for four. Blue, blue, blue. Blue. 
Brought three blues. Anyways, I, I can't remember how many blues I said. It's early. Uh, seven mana. If you draw a card, draw two cards instead. So, being able to take advantage of that looting effect again. Essentially, you're like, okay, this looting effect is not card advantage, but it is fantastic card selection. With this in play, now this is just straight up card advantage. Draw two, discard one. So, yeah, great card selection. Additional card advantage. Again, just additional card advantage on everything. This is just a great card, especially when it pairs well, again, with your commander like this one does. This can provide you a ton of value throughout the game. Again, turning your card selection into card advantage on every single one of your combats. Moving on, we've got Curator of Mysteries, a great card to take advantage of the other half of that looting effect. So, Curator of Mysteries says, well, flying, whenever you cycle or discard another card, scry one. So yeah, by discarding cards now, you are actually getting card selection as well. You are being able to say, okay, I'll set up my next draw. Look at the top card of my library. Don't like it, going on the bottom of my library. Cool. So yeah, this can definitely provide you a lot of card selection throughout the game. Moving on, Psychosis Crawler. Yeah, uh, um, these, I mean, I guess I'm bringing up some non-knights to start, but uh, that's just how I, I, I ordered them. That's okay. So I go to Scrawl here, Power Time is each equal number of cards in your hand. So again, if you've got that Thought Reflection or ways, you know, to get even more cards in your hand, this can become quite the threat. More importantly, though, whenever you draw a card, each opponent loses one life. So again, you're going to be getting a lot of card selection, card advantage throughout the game, drawing a good amount of cards. So yeah, you can drain your opponents out. There are definitely ways to take advantage of both drawing and discarding cards. Definitely ways to do that, and yeah, I mean, the folks of this deck definitely should be Night Tribal, but definitely consider some other ways, you know, to uh, to to interact with that and to take advantage of those benefits that you are getting. Now, when it comes to Knights, the first one that, well, I want to mention is Smitten Swordmaster. Hello, I'm Smitten. Uh, that was terrible. Anyways, 2-1 lifelinking human knight for two mana. That's not why I'm bringing this one up. Why I'm bringing this one up is because of Curry Favor, Sorcery Adventure. Uh, for a single black mana, you gain X life, and each bot loses X life for X the number of knights you control. Oh my goodness, yeah, in Night Tribal, you're going to be like, uh, I got 20 knights on the battlefield. One mana, you all lose 20 life, and I gain 20. Goodness gracious, uh, don't do in that voice. Uh, it's early. <laughs> Have I mentioned that? But yeah, so being able to just drain your opponents for an absurd amount, and yeah, there's a lot of ways to make a lot of knights quite quickly. You can do so, and again, your commander brings them out of the graveyard too. So yeah, you've got a lot of ways to drain your opponents with this, and, and yeah, getting this into play, maybe bouncing it back to your hand, doing it again. You can take your opponents out quite quickly with the Smitten Swordmaster. <clears throat> Next up, one that I'm not doing an accent for, Worthy Knight. 2-2 two, two Human Knight that says whenever you cast a Knight spell, create a 1-1 one, one White Human Creature token. Now this one obviously isn't going to add to your Knight count, uh, but Knight count. Uh, but it does, you know, add to your creature count. Uh, being able to, you know, just make a bunch of 1-1 one, one White Humans can be great because, hey, uh, just some blockers will just be great with that too. So essentially, it's, yeah, cast your Knights. This is very low to the ground. Cast your Knights, get additional creatures in play. That's great. And of course, that can benefit with, you know, other effects. Maybe you've got some ways to get counters on every one of your creatures. You can make them even deadlier, which can be great, of course. Moving on, speaking of making creatures, and this time, making Knights. Yeah, go figure. Silverwing Squadron. Star Star Flying Vigilance. Power time is each equal to the number of creatures you control, which, again, can be a ton. And, of course, um, yeah, this... Um, this can make a bunch of creatures too. Whenever it attacks, create a number of 2 2 white knight creature tokens with vigilance equal to the number of opponents you have. Hey, you're playing commander. If you still have all three of your opponents out there, this can make three creature tokens on attack, which just can be absolutely absurd. Again, adding to your knight count, adding to, you know, the power and toughness of this, uh, helping out with a lot of additional other benefits as well. Yeah, this, uh, this can get out of control quite quickly and, yeah, help hit really hard quite quickly too. Speaking of hitting hard, 3 4 Basar's Lieutenant. Vigilance, protection from multicolored. When it enters battlefield, you get a plus one counter on target creature you control. That's nice, isn't it? And whenever it or another creature control dies, put a counter on it. Create a 2 2 white knight creature token with vigilance. Now, this is actually really interesting because, again, if you do have some counter synergies, uh, maybe like a Catharsis Crusade, which is a pricier pick uh, that I don't think I'm mentioning, actually, but yeah, definitely consider that one. Uh, and then also, you know, like Feldar Retreat or whatever that one's called. Ways to get a lot of counters on your creatures or just, you know, ways to get counters on every single one of your creatures. Uh, this can get pretty absurd because, hey, um, this doesn't mention non-token. So basically... As long as you're getting counters on your token knights that this is making, you can just keep making more token knights with this. So, yeah, again, Catharsis Crusade would be pretty bonkers with this. Uh, this is just a great way to replace your knights, essentially. And, uh, again, at a certain point, if you're set up properly, the way to not infinitely replace them. I guess you really could if you had a sack outlet, too. But have fun with that. This could definitely be a very powerful card in a knight tribal deck. Next up, Valiant Knight. Speaking of which, hey, 3-4. Uh, for four mana. Other knights, you control get plus plus one, so a nice anthem effect there, but of course it doesn't stop there. Pay three white, white, knights you control gain, double strike until end of turn. 
gross. Uh, yeah, again, when you can get your army more massive, you know, maybe with counters, uh, even just going wide with a ton of knights, giving them double strike makes them hit twice as hard. Obviously, it protects them in combat as well, a little bit, kind of with that first strike damage too. And with your commander especially, hey, um, get that combat damage trigger twice. Get two knights out of your graveyard. So yeah, you can really set yourselves up for a lot of value with something like this. And I'm just going to mention another one too here in a bit. Uh, yeah, Duel's Heritage. It's Enchantment. Uh, whenever one or more creatures attack, you may have target attack creature gain double strike until I'm turned. This first up is a great political card. Get this in play. It's very low to the ground, very cheap, very efficient. Hey, uh, your opponents, uh, you know what? You're going to be attacking, right, with that creature? See that creature right there? Yeah, you love that creature, right? You want your creature to deal even more damage, right? You want to get the most of this attack. If you go attack uh, Stevie over there, um, I'll give your creature double strike. If you don't, no double strike. You attack me, no double strike. No, no, no. Make sure you get the most out of this combat. So yeah, you can definitely make a, a lot of deals with this. And of course, with your commander again, giving your commander a double strike is a very, very powerful thing. Not just to turn your commander into a three-shot KO, which it would be, but also again to be like, hey, hey, let's get a knight out of the graveyard back into play. Let's do it again. So yeah, getting two again, a lot of value out of that. And uh, and yeah, next up, uh, just speaking of value in knights, Knight of the White Orchid. Very happy this one's budget-friendly. It wasn't for the longest time. 2-2 two, two, first strike. Enters the battlefield if an opponent controls more lands, then you may search live for a planes card from the battlefield, then shuffle. Just a great early, you know, low to the ground knight that actually can help ramp you again the vast majority of the time. Uh, yeah, it's just very interesting again, and one that you can take advantage of an ETB again. Keep in mind, again, whether you're a commander, be able to get creatures out of your graveyard, you can really take advantage of knights that have ETBs and yeah, getting them again and again and again. Now that we've talked about all the budget buys though. Let's move on to the pricier picks cards that are outside of my budget, unfortunately, but yeah, might be inside your budget, so make sure you're considering them. Teferi's Age of Insight is the first one I'm going to be bringing up. Um, hey, uh, you know Thought Reflection? Well, this is a better Thought Reflection. Uh, not actually if it's both on the battlefield. Actually, if they're both on the battlefield, Thought Reflection is technically better. But uh, yeah, this one costs four mana. Thought Reflection costs seven. If you draw a card, except the first one you draw on each of your draw steps, draw two cards instead. Yeah, basically everything but your, you know, draw step draw is going to be doubled, which is really what matters when it comes to, you know, pairing with your commander, because again, your commander, yeah, again, has that eminent ability. Hey, uh, let's uh, attack with a knight. Cool, we draw. Oh, now we're drawing two? Nice, we're actually getting card advantage again. Like I mentioned earlier, this can give you a ton of additional card advantage throughout the game. Next up, Bone Miser. A, again, a way to take advantage of your discards as well, of taking advantage of your draws. Bone Miser, not a knight, a zombie wizard, and a creepy one at that. Whenever you discard a creature card, create a 2 2 black zombie creature token. Whenever you discard a land card, add black, black. Whenever you discard a non creature, non land card, draw a card. This one can give you an absurd amount of value throughout the game. No matter what you are discarding with your commander's trigger, you are getting even more value. Again, either a creature, not a, not a knight, unfortunately, it's a zombie. That's still fine. A, the land is going to give you mana, and a non-creature will draw you a card, so it can really help just keep things fueled, keep things going. Next up, again, not a knight, but again, another one you want to consider when it comes to pairing up with that, you know, draw discard loot effect. Archfiend of Ifnir, whenever you cycle discard another card, put a minus one minus one counter on each creature opponent's control. So yeah, being able to just shrink your opponent's army every single time you attack and take creatures out, that can be huge. So yeah, make sure you're considering ways, again, to take advantage of drawing, discarding, Again, things that you're going to be doing throughout the game with your commander with that eminence. So, yeah, whether your commander's again on the battlefield or in the command zone. Again, I didn't think they'd bring eminence back, but apparently they did. Moving on, Knight Exemplar. This one is uh, not budget friendly, but I uh, really wish it was for Knight Tribal. Here we go. Two do first strike, other Knight creatures you control get plus one and are indestructible. This one, actually, I wish was, you know, budget friendly, even for my Lord's deck, too. Sorry, Lord's deck. Regardless, plus one, plus one, indestructible, a great anthem effect, and a great way to protect your entire army. I mean, except for this, but your entire army. So, yeah, just a very, very good way to, well, pump your, you know, go wide strategy. And also, yeah, just keep them in play longer. A great card. Speaking of which, another one that, yeah, I really wish was budget friendly, but is not Kinsbale Cavalier. 2-2. Two, two. Kifkin Knight. Knight creatures you control have double strike, so again, like I mentioned before, double strike for your knights is great, being able to kind of protect them in combat, double up their damage, especially with your commander, being able to double up that combat damage trigger, that is huge, so yeah, definitely a knight, again, and I guess I should have mentioned with these, if they even are dealt with, again, if they're not exiled, if they're just, you know, destroyed or whatnot, they go to your graveyard, you get them back with your commander, and you're like, okay, let's just do it again. <laughs> let's just make sure that, you know, our knights have double strike. And actually, keep in mind that with your commander, your commander does have first strike damage, which is nice. So then you can just get it back out and just, you know, get this out right away. So yeah, just keep that in mind, actually. It's kind of kind of interesting. Your commander already has first strike damage. So yeah, it's going to bring something back before 
you know, the, the rest of your creatures most likely are dealing damage. Next up, History of Banalia. Yeah, a great saga. Uh, this thing wrecked in certain formats. A, uh, basically create a 2-2 two -two white, or sorry, create a 2-2 two -two white knight creature token with vigilance for the lore counters 1 and 2. The third one is knight you control plus 2 plus 1 until end of turn. So, yeah, make two tokens and also, uh, yeah, massive pump effect for just three mana altogether. That is pretty crazy. And yeah, this can definitely lead to a massive play. Next up, we've got uh, some big knights actually. Again, like I mentioned at the beginning of this episode, there really aren't too many high commander, uh, <laughs> high mana value knights that uh, that you know are all that effective. But these cavaliers are definitely some of them. Four six elemental knight for five mana in total vigilance enters the battlefield to serve to one target non land permanent control man. It's a three three golem. When it dies, return target artifact or enchantment card from your grave to your hand. So again, value on into the battlefield, value on death. Something you can use and abuse with your commander, being able to get it back out again and again and again. Just yeah, overall a really good card. And again, one that hey, you don't want to pay that mana cost. Cool. Uh, utilize your commander's eminence to actually you know discard it, get into your graveyard, and just cheat it out into play. Speaking of which, Cavalier of Night, uh, four five lifelink elemental knight again for five mana, two black black black. Enters the battlefield, sacrifice another creature. When you do story target creature development controls. So again, a way to actually say, okay, I got that knight over there that has an ETB. Let's sacrifice it. Let's get into our graveyard. Let's then utilize our commander to get that back out while also taking out an opponent's creature. Or again, taking advantage of this ETB with your commander too. And when this dies, return target creature card converted mana cost three or less from your grave to the battlefield. Again, a ton of incredibly effective knights at three or less. And uh, and yeah, being able to get another one back out for free is great with this again especially since you can fill your graveyard with knights thanks to your commander's trigger cavalier of gales again another knight five mana another one of these cavaliers that are very effective five five flyer again cheat it in your graveyard you know discard it get in your graveyard cheat it back out enters the battlefield draw three put two from your hand on top of your library in any order so basically brainstorm can be a great amount of value for you again this pairs incredibly well with a thought reflection to various uh protect or to various to various ages insight draw six put two on top of your library you know if that's the combination right there and when it dies shuffle into someone's library then scry two so this one you can't just keep getting back out because it's going to automatically go in your library so yeah you can't just say like oh, i'm gonna get my graveyard with my commander you can still discard it from your hand and whatnot but still getting additional you know scry two that's nice just being able to you know get additional you know card selection with this as well again a lot of effective knights out there in our budget buys and the pricier picks a lot of great ones to pick from and yeah overall sadar jabari of zalfir is a very interesting commander I am glad that they limited the eminence ability. Uh, you know, it, it's, I mean, I guess the other ones are limited too to tribal effects for the most part. Loros isn't, but still, I, I mean, being able to, you know, just say like, okay, Knights are not the most powerful tribe out there. Let's give them a decent trigger with this. It still, again, is, uh, I mean, a, a controversial mechanic because again, it's like basically you start off with an enchantment that's in play. It's kind of like having a ley line that no one can touch, or it is actually more so like an emblem that no one can touch. And you're like, hey, this emblem, I just have it just because I started off with this commander. Just have it. And you can't interact with it. I guess unless my commander comes into play. Then you could probably bounce it back to my hand. But I could still choose to put it back in the command zone, so I still have it. You know, I, still, I still have it. So essentially, yeah, Eminence is kind of a weird mechanic that uh, it's kind of split on uh, if people like it or not. Regardless, yeah, an interesting design for a commander. A lot of ways, you know, take advantage of those draw and discards. A lot of ways, you know, just take advantage of you know, the knights that you have. It, it's a very interesting commander. One that you can do a lot of cool things with. Again, double strike with this can be quite great. You can go wide. You can make a lot of tokens with a knight tribal deck. You can make them pretty, pretty hard to deal with. You can make them pretty tough. And, and yeah, just an interesting commander overall i'd love to hear your thoughts on it though let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are on sadar jabari of zalfir and of course make sure you're staying tuned to this channel for any more quick takes and spoilers coming out and yeah as always thanks again and have a good one this show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you if you're looking for an easy way to help support this show make sure that you like share and subscribe also hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes you can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com we also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support.